angry, pissed off, negative, unresourceful state. You can't do anything well. You've had one of those days, for instance, where everything you're doing, you're like, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. I'm such a fool, right? You had that day? We've all had that day. Yeah. Next day, similar situation, you're like, wow, you know, that was me. I did a really great job, right? You were perfect. So one day you're brilliant. Next day, same situation, you're brutal. That's not talent. That's not ability. That's the state that you're in. So the key to success is not just A, to have your vision, but to be able to manage the way you feel in the moment. Now, if you're a parent, what's the most resourceful state? Patience. <laughs> if you're a businessman looking to make money on Wall Street, it's probably certainty yep. or courage because fear is the worst emotion of all for being a trader on Wall Street. So every business has different states that you need to master. Now, in, in most businesses, in matters of wealth, there's three. Three states that you need to master to be able to trigger at a moment's notice. And it's easy to do once you learn how, which is what I teach people, okay? And number one is certainty. To be certain about what you're doing. The second one is clarity. To be clear, to not to be overwhelmed, which the opposite would be overwhelmed. And the third is courage. Is to have a conviction, to know that you might not be right all the time, but you're gonna not gonna let fear stop you. Because if there's one distinction that between the wealthy people of the world and the poor people of the world is that wealthy people act in the face of fear while poor people run away from fear. Agreed. You need to learn how to communicate with people. Okay, the, 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 the site here says, the PowerPoint says, learn to become a professional salesperson. When, when, I, know, when I think of the professional salesperson, I think about a professional communicator, someone know, who knows how to make contact, someone who knows how to control a conversation. I don't think about a swindler. I don't think about a tricky dude. I don't think about a huckster. I don't think about a scam artist. I think about, dude, this guy showed me something I didn't know. You know how many things that I almost bought were the wrong thing, but a professional salesperson with a full pipeline said, no, 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 dude, you don't want that. One of the best salespeople I know, okay, a guy named Robert, I'm not gonna give his last name because I don't have permission. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. $25 billion worth of real estate. Hey, Robert, is this a good deal? Yeah, you know, but that's not the one I would do. I would, I would buy this one over here if I were you, okay? See, see, he's a professional, he's a communicator. He, he'll tell me when I'm doing wrong. He'll tell me when I'm right, tell me when I'm wrong. He'll challenge me. He's not playing games trying to like, match tones i saw this video the other day matching people some did you see it okay get, get right at the right moment at the right moment lower your voice and i don't want to do that i'm talking about a professional salesperson it doesn't have to rely on tricks because their pipeline's so big there's seven billion people on the planet that are qualified and interested in buying your product you do not need to trick people and that's why so many people think commission I don't want to be a salesperson equals I don't want to be a huckster. Well, you don't have to be if you're a professional. If you're in sales, make 300 cold calls a day. 300 cold calls a day. For 300 you, cold calls a day. Correct. Will it still work nowadays? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We got kids doing it, it right now. Question. We even got some lazy Dutch kids doing it right now. Just pick up the phone. Yeah, yeah. Make and I call. mean, for a, for a Dutch kid, 24 years old, to make 20 cold calls a day, you think it's a big fucking deal. There's nobody teaching sales in this country that I'm aware of that tells you to make 300 cold calls a day. In fact, there's nobody on the planet that I'm aware of that tells you to make 300 cold calls a day. I had a guy just do a $50 million deal. He said, Dan, if you had just told me I was 2,000 cold calls away from my first deal, I would have sent you a check for 20 grand and said thank you and I want to come to the castle. Your first customer is the most difficult thing you'll ever do as a business person in, in my experience to find someone who will actually pay you that first time. That isn't your mom. Yeah, or that's or right. Your, well, yeah. that's right. That isn't a family member. Yeah. That's an actual customer. Yeah. And the, the other problem that people face when they're trying to sell a new product is one of, the one of the ways that people decide whether they're going to buy something is whether or not a, they know anyone else who's already bought it, or B, if there's other people in their domain that are already using it. Mm. And if, if your sales pitch is, well, no, this is new and revolutionary, you think, well, that's a wonderful sales pitch. It is like it is if you're talking to someone who's entrepreneurial and risk-taking and, inter and interested in revolutionary ideas. But if you're talking to a middle manager in a company, the last thing that person wants to hear is, 
well, you could be a risk taker and introduce this into your company. The person's yeah. thinking, I don't want to put my job or mm -hmm. reputation on the line for your product, even if it is revolutionary, in part because if it succeeds, I probably won't be rewarded for its success. So when we were selling our, our employee selection software, for example, we, we ran into, we were academics, or, and so, you know, there was lots of things we didn't know about business. And one of the things we ran into, which was so funny, we talked to the people who were doing the hiring, and they had a certain budget, which was usually lower than, because they had virtually no budget for hiring, weirdly enough. Um, so what we were charging for the product, which was still extremely modest, exceeded their budget. We said, well, look, you're going to make a 250-fold return on this. That's, that's the... Pessimistically, it's 50. Realistically, it's 250, and the upper end was more like 500. So it's a no-brainer to implement this. It's like, well, we're budgeted on the cost side. Mm. What do you mean? Well, if we, if we hire more productive employees, we won't be rewarded for that. We'll just be punished for spending more money on yeah. the outset. I yeah. thought, well, we can't even talk to you because I'm trying to sell you something that will benefit your company, but for you... As the decision maker, there's nothing but risk in, mm. in implementing the new process. Yeah. So that just blew me away. It's like, oh, I see. The hiring budget and the productivity budget aren't associated. Yeah. So that's like a fatal impediment to, to our sales process. Mm. Skill number one, the ability to empathize with your customers. You see, if you're selling low ticket item or if you're selling a commodity, you're working in a retail shop, people come in, they grab and go, or you're selling something that's like transactional. Hey, just show them the aisle or you show them stuff. Well, you don't really need to have empathy because you're just providing a quick answer, a quick solution. However, if you're selling anything that is significant, if you're selling something that's like high ticket, you need to have deep empathy. One thing I always say is this, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. When you are selling something at a higher price, at a higher transactional value, your customers need to know that you've got their back and you have to be able to connect with people. You know what, if you want one big secret when it comes to having tremendous success, when it comes to closing, here's one, give a damn. Actually give a damn about the well-being of your customers. Give a damn about the result. Give a damn about their outcome. When you give a damn, if your product or service are not a good fit, you're gonna tell them it's not a good fit. If there's other people, there are other people that could provide a better service, better than you, you will not hesitate to recommend that to your prospect. That is what I'm talking about. Giving a damn. I was doing a role play with one of my students during one of our live classes, right? We were doing role play and he was saying all the right thing. He was asking the right questions and, and kind of following the, the formula, right? Saying the right words. But I said, you know what? You're not gonna close. He was like, oh, how come? I'm saying all the right thing. I'm, I'm following the formula. I said, I don't feel like you give a damn. I don't feel like you care. There's no empathy. You're like a robot. All your answers and questions are so mechanical and, and so robotic. I don't feel the connection. I'm not able to connect with you. If I don't connect and I don't feel that you care, I'm not gonna buy. And at first he was puzzled. He didn't quite get it. I said, do it again. And he'd do it again, he'd do it again, and do it again. And then finally, after multiple times, he said, now, that's better. Now it comes across that you actually care about their well-being. Very, very important to have the ability. Great closers have the ability to develop their deep connections with their prospects.